much. We've got three great talks uh, lined up. Um, our first talk, Johan Jody, is going to tell us about testing tech clusters. Okay, thanks. Uh, this is work together with Patrick Jansson and Claudio Amaral, uh, both from Chalmers. And I was on sabbatical at Chalmers when working on this. Actually, it's a complete Chalmers talk. So the first observation is that classes are laws. Um, classes combine a number of methods into a single unit, and the reason they're combined in this unit is because they satisfy some properties. And uh, that's obvious when you look at the uh, Haskell report. Uh, you know all of this, of course, this is in the Haskell 2010 report. Uh, this is the class functor, which has a method fmap. And the second thing the report says is uh, instances of the functor class should satisfy these two laws. And then it also says that <coughs> laws are satisfied by lists that may be entire. And uh, the report doesn't give any proof of this fact, but uh, I'm sure proofs can be found somewhere. Uh, second class uh, is monad. I don't give the methods. Uh, you know the return and bind, of course, it satisfies these three laws. Return is from unit and so as activity, and instances of both monad and functor should satisfy an extra law, which is also specified in the report, and it, again, it's satisfied by this array, maybe, and IL. Uh, again, proofs are not, not, not given here. So, um, if I get an instance, how, how uh, confident am I that the instance indeed satisfies the laws that it should satisfy? So, uh, I was thinking of taking some uh, Package packages and testing for the validity of the laws of the, of the class instances. And to not embarrass anyone here, I took a package from ourselves. So, uh, I, I took the IDs package developed at the Open University, Utah University. It's an, a package that provides feedback in mathematical and programming exercises. Its content doesn't really matter here. Uh, what matters is that it has about 25,000 lines of code. It has 526 class instances, of which 27 of functor, 6 of monad, uh, 25 monoids, 74 show, and here I don't count the derived instances, and there is, uh, well, a couple of hundred more there. So if you count the number of laws I would have to check for these instances, just these, I would have to check 221 laws. <coughs> so, do all class instances in our package satisfy the corresponding laws? Um, so I have it on through all uh, 500, how much was it? Uh, 500 plus uh, uh, classes, uh, but until now I haven't found any counterexample yet. And, uh, the, the, the guy who programmed most of the, the package is, is a very careful programmer, so I, I, I was expecting this. Uh, although around some classes there are remarks that the invariant is not maintained here, so that's slightly worrisome, but the, the, the testing I did uh, didn't uh, show any errors there. So what could I do? Well, I could try to prove all these laws by hand, 221 proofs, I'm not going to do that of course. Uh, I could try to ship off the laws to a theorem prover, that would be uh, nice. But uh, that requires an, uh, uh, an interface there. Or I can try to use QuickCheck to test the laws. And this is uh, what I did. And, and what we described in our paper is uh, we develop a framework in we, which we use QuickCheck to test class laws. And what you can do as a user, suppose you write instance functor for your data with some uh, definition of fmap. You can then write instance functor laws your data, and you can either leave that an empty instance, or you can add some uh, uh, custom laws or adaptation of the default laws that are there, and then you can check your laws by calling a function quick law check, which we include in our package, uh, and you apply the quick law check on an undefined value of a functor law applied to your data. So we have a type of functor laws uh, to which we apply to you, which you can apply to your data. So I'm going to briefly show how to test the monoid laws. Uh, I'll then show how you can represent laws, how you can test them, and how our framework implements all of this. 
And then I'll, uh, uh, if there's time enough, I will show how you can provide evidence for laws, how you can add evidence, and uh, I'll look at the state of modern laws. So if you look at the monoid class, class you have two methods, the empty and the uh, append, which takes two more monoid values and two reasons. And the, uh, uh, the package says that these methods should satisfy, empty is a unit of append, append is a substitute. Well, I can formulate these laws as quick check laws, this is what you directly get, so uh, uh, I pass an argument m to monoid law 1, and then mem t append m should be equal to f, so I have uh, Boolean expressions. I have Boolean expressions, I can test them, for example, on lists of integers, uh, so I call quick check on monoid law uh, of type in list of integer bool, and monoid law 2 and monoid law 3. So this works, and uh, the instance on, uh, on list of int gives the thing you expect, so here uh, all, all tests go through. Suppose now I want to test the monoid laws on functions. So I have two types here, endo, which contains a function of type a to a, and I have a type state s, the well-known state type, which takes a status input and returns a value in a new state. Suppose I want to talk, test the monoid laws on these types, uh, their instance of monoid. What happens if I type quick check uh, uh, monoid law 1 of type endo int? Well, you can guess, uh, I guess, um, uh, there's no equality defined on functions. So you have to specify a way to compare uh, functions. That's not too hard. So uh, what I do now is I add a parameter to be able to test functions. So I pass arguments to the function which I can then, and then I can compare the results by applying functions. Um, so I introduce a, a class test equal, which takes a pair of values uh, which I want to compare for equality, a parameter uh, so, uh, which I need for determining equality and then return to rule. So this param here is a, a type family and it depends on the type you pass as argument. So uh, to compare values of list types, I don't need any extra argument. I can directly compare. But if I want to compare functions, I need an argument to run the function on to compare the results. So the param for endo a is the a value. If I want to compare state values, I need a starting state value uh, to, start, to start the function, to apply the function on and compare the results. So for state, I have s as the param. Well, with this definition, I can now uh, uh, implement test equal for uh, endo. So I, I get a left function and a right function and a parameter and then I apply this left function to the parameter and the right function to the parameter and take the equality of those two. Well, as you saw in the test equal, I, I, uh, I took a pair of values so I now let my laws return a pair of values instead of a Boolean property. So I introduce the type equal which returns a pair of values of type A and I introduce a constructor equals dot equals which constructs these pairs and the monoid laws are the same as you saw but now instead of returning a boolean they return a pair of values okay so now I have the machinery to test uh, endo values and this is what I have to write I have a, a main function in which I test the three laws but they, they're getting quite big uh, to break the lines here uh, so I to test the monoid law 1, I apply test equal after that, and then I have to uh, supply the type. And especially for the third law here, uh, it's getting pretty uh, uh, long. So instead, what I want to write is the following. Uh, so I want to write quick law check, undefined values of my three uh, laws applied to end of it. So this is my goal, and this is what our framework uh, is giving. And in the rest of the talk, I will show what kind of representations you need to be able to write this. So the first thing you have to look at is what does a law look like? What is a law? So, so we have a special kind of laws, uh, and rather simple, I, I would say. Laws can take arguments. Those are the things for which you want to get arbitrary values for testing. Uh, so that's the law arcs here. And they return 
a pair of things which I can test for equality, and I call that the law body, and the equal gives me the pair of things. Um, uh, as you see here, the law arcs uh, returns different types for different laws. So I need, uh, so law arcs is a type family, and I need types to express the laws. So I, I will introduce these empty data types, monoid law 1, monoid law 2, and 3, to represent the laws and to specify what they do on what kind of arguments they take. So type family law arcs <coughs> takes these three uh, laws and specifies what the arguments are for those laws. So for the first two laws, I only have a single monoid value. For the third law, I need three monoid values to test associativity. For the body, pretty, pretty boring for the monoid uh, case, uh, the, the type of the resulting expressions are monoid values. So each of the laws returns a monoid value and a pair of monoid, uh, monoid values, actually. For the functor class, the types here get more interesting. But, uh, I wanted to show them all. And now I connect these two to each other. So I connect the monoid law, uh, uh, the law with the type monoid law. So here you see that monoid law 1 has type law of monoid law 1, where the monoid law 1 has a standard default uh, implementation returning a pair of monoid values. So how do I test these? Well, I have this function quick law check which quick checks after turning a law uh, into something that can be quick checked, so after using a function law test. And this law test is a member method of the class uh, law test. It takes a t value to steer the types, and because you have to refer to a t value in the class method. Then it takes the arguments for the law. Uh, then it takes a parameter needed to test the equality <coughs> of the law body. And then it returns a quick check property which can be tested by quick And what you then have to do is implement, uh, uh, define an instance of this class law test for your law. So here's an uh, instance for monoid law 1, where I call the monoid law 1 law and let it follow by the testing function. And this is basically all you have to do. What to test endo, uh, the endo instance of monoid laws, what you can now do is write instance monoid laws endo, and then you can define this expression I gave before, uh, uh, quick law check these three laws. <coughs> they will give you, if your instance is fine, uh, uh, check, uh, that they will check to, uh, uh, okay. So the class laws framework um, uh, implements the necessary type, type family in class. Definitions are just uh, presented. Uh, we have implemented law, laws for monad, functor, the combination of the two, monad plus, monoid, monad state. And um, uh, we provide some data types for testing, lists, maybe, endo, state. And uh, if you have any wishes or, 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 uh, for, for class laws or for data types, uh, please tell us and you can easily add them. Or you can add them yourself. Um, providing evidence. Sometimes you have a law. Uh, for example, Patrick and I wrote a paper about data conversion where we went from one level stage to another and back again and we wanted to prove that the composition of those uh, two conversion functions was the identity. And the paper we wrote, the, the source file for the paper contained a couple of thousands of lines of, of a poor man's proof, you might say, uh, uh, of uh, why the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And we put those into lists to check if the types of those expressions were were, uh, were the same, but we didn't test the list themselves for equality. So now in our framework, we built in the possibility to uh, add sub-steps to your laws. So you have the left-hand side, right-hand side, but you can put elements in the middle, and then the, the class framework will, uh, the class laws framework will test successive elements for equality. Uh, so it first type checks the steps, which is already a good thing for your proofs, but then it also tests successive elements for, for equality. And the interesting aspect here is that sometimes we found that to, to make this proof, you sometimes need extra class constraints, which you, you're not aware of if you just look at the law. But if you look at the intermediate steps, suddenly those class constraints pop up. So you, you need to do sometimes extra things to make it work. So we applied the uh, uh, framework to the state monad laws. A state monad is a monad with a put and a get. 
So here is the, the class definition. Get gives you a value, put, puts a value, and, and satisfies. So, so these are commonly agreed upon laws for the state of math. So puts after puts, puts the second value, uh, putting an S and then getting it. Uh, is the same as putting an S and returning it. Uh, get and then put is the idea, is skip, and then there's a, a, a complicated law. Doesn't really matter for, uh, for, for this, this case. Um, so you want uh, to see if the state model implementations satisfy these laws. Uh, so the Haskell libraries contain both a lazy and a strict version of the state model. Uh, so laziness is apparently an issue. So what we did is we uh, extended our framework uh, to also test for undefined values. So uh, the, the test cases that are generated contain uh, undefined values. And if you do that, and you test the monad laws for the state monad, it turns out that none of the state monad implementation satisfies these laws. Um, so testing these laws uh, is important for uh, uh, testing laziness properties of these things. And uh, I think there was a, a talk at the ICFP uh, where, where actually somebody proved that the state monad implementations could not satisfy the laws, which is better than just testing it, of course, but uh, our tests point to the same result, at least. So I come to the conclusion. So class laws is a framework for testing laws, uh, for instance, of class laws. Uh, what you need to do as a user is add a couple of declarations per law and a couple of declarations per data type on which laws are tested to test class laws. And uh, so the framework already provides quite a few of those laws and a couple of data types, and uh, we're happy to add more. Um, the interesting thing is that explicitly formulating the laws can sometimes change the class hierarchy. You're making assumptions about, func about functions that you need to express the laws, which are not present in the class hierarchy. And you can uh, discuss whether or not uh, these extra functions need to be part of the, the class hierarchy, but it's good to know about it. Um, as future work, we would like to ship off uh, our, our laws to a, a theory improver, um, and, uh, so that well, it gives extra confidence, of course. Uh, you can download the package from Hackage. Uh, we uploaded our last version yesterday. Uh, it doesn't work with 7.2, but it works with most other <coughs> Haskell or GHC uh, versions. Uh, we're happy to take uh, feature requests or, uh, or contributions from, the, from, from you. And uh, if you have any other ideas or questions, please ask. Thank you.